Hello, hello, this is Hip Hop Weekly All Access, and we are here live with the one and only Melissa Scott, the newest cast member of Love and Hip, Love and Hip Hop, on our Soul Bar Pals and Lounge. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I'm Melissa Scott, of course. Um, own Tracks Girls, Party with Animals, Soul Bar, uh, you know, a plethora of things around Atlanta, just uh, bobbing and weaving and doing my thing. Okay. So tell us a little bit about a little bit about your involvement with the Tracks Girls. Sure. Well, I own Tracks Girls, um, but basically, I mean, we're an event company. We do um, like really big uh, events around the country. Um, definitely in Atlanta, we do the largest Urban Pride in the country, um, Pure Heat, uh, which is Labor Day weekend. We do uh, Fiesta out in Cancun now, Memorial weekend. We have um, President's Day weekend out in San Juan. We do some events down in Miami, New York. Um, you know, it's just, and of course Vegas. Vegas is one of our, our big events we do in March as well during spring break. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So, like you're involved in, like you said, a plethora of things in Atlanta. Yeah. And um, I'm also seeing that you're a known DJ and party promoter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I don't DJ as much anymore. I had um, actually stopped DJing because I, I felt it uh, not fair. People were calling me asking me to DJ and I had like 10 20 DJs working for me so I felt like how can I block that like I should so I started taking the bookings but like going as a host and then let my DJs play so that their names would get big as well and so um so I stopped DJing until like recently Kiki Wyatt did a concert <laughs> and uh, they're like I need to DJ this concert so I had to come out of hiding and uh, I, I played at that show uh, most recently but I mean I used to DJ overseas a lot I used to DJ uh here in Atlanta, like some really big parties here, and same thing, New York. I used to travel a lot, uh, DJ. But um, since I started promoting parties, not so much. Okay. So in your years of being a DJ, mm -hmm. um, who, who have uh, who have you worked with in the past? Like, what do you mean? Like any artists? Uh, who who you, who'd you DJ for? No, 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 no. I was the artist. Oh, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm the DJ. Like I was like, you know, fifteen hundred. Like I'm the artist. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, it, it was a situation where M M DJ M is what they call me. Oh, okay. M is DJ. <laughs> so gotcha. that was the the hype behind the party. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Believe it or not, actually, my first time DJing for an artist was Kiki White. Oh. Traditionally, I'm the artist. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as uh, your latest venture, um, my correct 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 me if I'm wrong. Love and hip hop. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about your experience. Uh, it was cool, man. I, I don't know how I got out of that thing painless like that. <laughs> um, it was all right. I mean, I feel like some of my relationships got stressed and strained and aren't necessarily in the same position that they were in going into it. But, I mean, then at the, at the same time, maybe that's the true colors showing through. So, I, I don't know. But, um, definitely I lost some relationships that I, I loved and had respect for. Not lost, but they, they're stressed. Um, they're all still there, but they're a little stressed. Um, but I got out without any drinks in my face. <laughs> so right. I, I consider that a successful transition. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, can you, can you give us a little bit of, about your relationships? Like, for example, like Jocelyn, you know, I've been watching the show. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how it, you know, played out. Uh, you know, people saying, oh, okay, well, yeah, she's showing more favoritism over Mimi or and so forth. It's not favoritism. It's It's... I mean, you gotta handle everybody the way that they want to be handled. Like, I, I treat people how they want to be treated by me. Now, I, and how, I mean, I'm not gonna deal with you at all if I don't have any respect for you. So, I deal with people how they want to be dealt with by me. Jocelyn, I love Jocelyn. When Jocelyn's nice to me, I'm nice to her. When Jocelyn's being a jerk, I don't talk to Jocelyn. You know what I'm saying? So, but I love her. It doesn't change my, my level of love for her. I love Mimi. It doesn't change. But when she's nice to me, I'm nice to her. When she's not nice to me, I don't talk to her. Um, Carly, same thing. Carly's my girl. Carly's always nice to me. She's annoying, but she's always nice to me. Um, but you know, I think I. But you gotta remember too. I think everybody, all these girls are crazy. <laughs> I think they're all completely out of their minds. <laughs> but just, but they're so sweet. They're all so sweet in their own way. My producer said that to me. Like every time they name somebody, I'm like, oh, they're sweet. And she's like, you think everybody's sweet? <laughs> and like, but I do. Like in their own way, I feel like everybody's sweet. But I react to personalities probably sometimes a little different than they react to each other. Like I react to Jocelyn and her, you know, flamboyant mouth. I react to it a little different than, say, Carly would or, or Don might. You know what I mean? Okay. I, had, I feel like I had a little leg up going into it because um, 
you know, I got some big pointers. I was like, you know, what am I doing? And Mimi just, Mimi told me something important. Stevie told me something important. Mimi was like, um, and then Jocelyn told me something important. Mimi said, um, just remember everything you say, however you feel in today, it might be different than tomorrow, but just remember everything you say is, can forever be used, period. Can be said again. And they'll play it back. When you be like, oh, you might not feel that way no more. And they'll play it back. So you better be careful what you say and mean it when you say it. And Stevie said to me, um, just be yourself. And that was probably the most important part right there. Like, be yourself. Like, okay, if somebody says something to me, would I throw a drink on them? I probably would not. So why would I do that on TV? Right. And then Jocelyn said, why are you telling me you was doing a show, ho? <laughs> I was like, well, shit. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just, everybody had this, a little something to say, but I took it all to heart. Okay. Okay. So, is, do you see yourself uh, being, you know, back on for another season? Um, if it makes sense, I would. I would definitely do Love and Hip Hop again. Like I said, it was fun. It was cool. It um, it definitely brought uh, brand recognition to my brand. It uh, you know, brought a lot of visibility to Soul Bar. Um, the party buses are great. Uh, Carly and I just started a company together, like about uh two or three weeks ago. Okay. Um, we bought some sprinters, so now we have party bus animals, and then we have elite transportation, which is you know, sprinters are a more upscale. Uh, uh, transportation for like you know celebrities and people that just want to look a little different a different look than a party bus so we have those now um but yeah i mean all in all it was a, it was a great experience i had a great time i loved um uh talking you know having conversations with mona like um i don't have very many mentors like in the world like i, I don't look up to a lot of people i respect a lot of people but i don't necessarily look up to a lot of people and i look up to her like i watched that lady like I, you know, it's funny, I, I had her number my, uh, her cell phone number on my phone from like 15 years ago. It never changed. Oh, wow. And um, from like booking like Missy from like back in the day. And um, it just, you know, I, I respect her hustle. Um, I respect like LaShawn's hustle, like the, some of the people that are the producers and things that work with the show. So, you know, it just is, I, I feel like I found some mentor types uh, okay. in, in the environment. Yeah. So overall, you had, you what you've gained from it was... Uh, a positive experience yeah man it was it was definitely cool and like I said the people that act weird with me then they probably was fake anyway um I never understood Jocelyn used to always call everybody fake ass so she fake she fake she fake and I just found myself I'm like oh you fake and I finally figured out what that meant like you are fake like how dare you act this way you know when it's something that's beneficial to you mm -hmm. but now I'm here with you at your job and then you're gonna act funny with me like what like what's wrong with you you fake yeah <laughs> so, how how was how did um, you go about getting selected? Works in general, like somebody has to kind of refer you, and then you kind of you do. It's like it's not interviews. It is interviews. What am I talking about? Um, you do different interviews, and you do some here in Atlanta. You do some on Skype, and you do some you know out of town things like that. But uh, Carly, I think, had mentioned to them uh, uh, something about me. I don't know exactly what she said, <laughs> but. I, I believe Carly said something to them about me. Um, I'm not sure what Mimi said. Obviously, Jocelyn must have said, okay, cool. But, you know, it just down the ranks. But, I mean, I've known all these people for a long time. I've known, um, you know, Kurt, like, 20-plus years. I've known Arian's ass for, like, 20 years. I've known uh, Mimi not too long. Probably about five for Mimi. A little longer for Jocelyn. So, Carly. Carly, not so long. But we just, we glued. We gelled, like, right away. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you've definitely, you know, you've got your hands into a lot of things here in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, is there something else you would like to talk about that you want, you know, the viewers to know about you? Well, I'm looking for a wife. And so I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, no, I mean, Atlanta's just is a cool town. Like, I love this place. Um, I, it's so funny because I, every time I go somewhere to visit, I'm like, I want to move here. I want to move here. But I can't wait to get back to the A. Like, it's nothing like this place. And, um... You know, being the mayor of Atlanta myself, um, it Sorry. it's 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 perfect. <laughs> yeah. so are you are you from? You're not from here. I'm from Augusta, Georgia, okay. but I was raised in Baltimore, gotcha. and then I went back to Augusta to go to college. And like as soon as I graduated college, I moved up here and I started DJing up here um, and writing software. So um, my degree is in mathematics, so it was an easy transition into writing software. Um, you know, math, I mean, programming is really like a lot of deductive reasoning, knowing a language and then reasoning with it. But, um, so I was up here writing software, working corporate America, tired as hell every day, DJing at night because just loving the life, saving money. And then I just quit. 
like I had saved like about 500 <laughs> and then I just quit and then um went and uh invested in soul bar and um I bought all my I did all this like in a month I like bought all my buses and then I went and got invested in soul bar and just was just chilling like living like just trying to figure out the true 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 role of entrepreneurship um you know so it looks yeah. like you've mastered it yeah yeah and you, you, you know congratulations on all your endeavors um so as far as the next um uh, event mm -hmm. well, the biggest event um uh, that's coming up next. Two weeks. Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta um, uh, Pride Weekend. Um, it's literally the largest urban pride in the country. Um, we do a festival on that Sunday, Labor Day weekend. We do about 40,000 people. Um, and it's cool. It's an opportunity for me to present new artists, but talented artists. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you got that girl that can sing. Right. But then you got that girl that can sing that also got backup dancers that also got a dope track. Mm -hmm. So we, we got that girl, you know, not just the one that can sing. We got the people that got their show put together and they don't have an opportunity necessarily to present in front of like a large audience. Well, I'm going to give you the biggest audience you've ever had. I'm going to give you the biggest audience a lot of Grammy award winning artists have never had. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> hence why when the festival is going on, like it's, for me, it's I when I started the festival, it was with the idea of unsigned hype. Because mm -hmm. um, I used to put out mixtapes. Like I used to put out like a lot of mixtapes back in the day. And um, it was called unsigned hype. And so the idea when I started the festival was to do unsigned hype, uh, unsigned artists, and just put them in front of a large audience of 10,000 or so people. Well, that grew like in two years to 40,000 people. And now I have, I'm putting on this unsigned hype showcase, but then I look up and like, Monaco will pop up. K. Michelle will be there. You know, you got name, Brandy. So now it's like, okay, so now we have to make a little sliver spot for a Grammy award winning artist. And then we also do our unsigned hype. And then we do just, we do gay stuff. We do a J-Set competition. We do um, a hair battle, like a real hair battle. Like, we'll do something to get your hair cut, like type battle. Um, and we do, um, oh man, gospel. <laughs> like the first hour is gospel house music, which that's probably some gay stuff. <laughs> so we do that in the beginning, um, you know, and then we move on throughout our gay day <laughs> and then do, uh, you know, other things as well. So it, it's cool. All the politicians in the city come out for that. Mm -hmm. um, like it's it's like the it event now, right. Labor Day weekend. Yeah. So and it all, you you guys also have surrounding parties mm -hmm. that go within that weekend as well. Right. Over the course of the uh, five days, I do about uh, twenty four to twenty eight events somewhere around there. Um, so a lot of the events are taking place at the same time. Like we'll be doing a party at Opera. I do about three to four thousand people at Opera like during the daytime on Saturday. But then we're also running workshops. And doing movie premieres at the at the host hotel, the Georgian Terrace. But then that night, you know, we got a big old party at the Freight Depot, and then we'll wake right back up and then go to the park. So it starts Wednesday, and then it goes all the way into the next Tuesday. And then we sell like these weekend VIP passes that people come in. They're there for three or four days, and they got their wristbands on. They can just hit any event that they want to. Okay. Well, that's very you know, if if anybody's traveling to Atlanta, definitely they should look forward to coming to your Pure Heat. Uh, festival. Oh, it's lit. I mean, we even we even take a boat out. We take a boat out on uh, Lake Lanier. We we do the water too. So we take oh, a house wow. boat out and uh, we take a couple hundred people out there as well. Okay. Nice. Yes. Okay. So give us your uh, social media handles where we could be where you could be reached. Sure. Um, my Instagram is the getaway the D A <laughs> great D J M. So it's D A G R E A T then D J M, and that's like everything. That's Twitter. That's. Uh, uh, Instagram and then Snapchat is like uh, myself so yeah and then of course like you know I got my new publicist <laughs> yeah no Mimi and Shante uh, Lash Vision in the building so like I, pre I appreciate you girls like for always hooking me up for everything like I really really appreciate that and I appreciate y'all for having me thank you for uh, talking with Hip Hop Weekly yeah